Hello. Hope I don't have any technical problems tonight. I'm going to wait for at least one person so they can let me know if they can hear me okay. That will be the first thing. Hi, hey Renee. Just a little quick sound check. Can you all hear me okay? I had a snafu yesterday when trying to use YouTube. Just want to make sure that today that's not an issue. Can you guys hear me? Let me give people a little more time to get in here. Hey, September, can you hear me okay? I'm trying to get at least one person to confirm they can hear me because I had a snafu last night trying to use YouTube. The sound quality was terrible. Hi, Ron, Gregory, Renee, and Carletta. No one's confirmed they can hear yet. Oh, yep, thanks, September. Okay, she confirmed. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started because of course, whoever misses anything can always look at it again. And what I'm doing is I'm recording this with my phone and my laptop. I'll upload the video to YouTube and that way it'll be the best of both worlds. I, Cause a lot of people, they prefer the Facebook platform because it's easier apparently to do the interacting and everything. But let me go ahead and get right into this. Um, somewhat, so you all know that every topic that I do so far has been inspired by an audience request or a, a friend or associate, someone requesting either certain information, certain topics. I had a conversation with someone yesterday and I was trying to decide, you know, which topic I should do next. And, you know, I'm all about trying to hurry up and get to the point. I'm, I'm considering that people actually want to know the quickest way to get to the coin. Okay. So I respect that. And that's what I wanted to do. But the person made a good point. A lot of the people are not in the mindset to thrive and flourish in business. And so that's part of why they're having difficulty. So tonight's topic is going to be get your mind right first then get the money, okay? Um, because I was watching a Dr. Boyce Watkins video. I definitely want to give him some credit because um, I've been watching a lot of his videos. And so um, although I have my own independent thoughts, it happens to be that I see a lot of things in a similar way that he sees things. And um, so I, I watch a lot of his things. And he said something today that he had heard a statistic that 92% of people who set goals do not accomplish their goals. 92. At first I thought it was the reverse, but I was like, wait a minute. 92% of people who set out to accomplish a goal, they don't accomplish their goal. Now, of course, you know, statistics gets a little weird and everything, but I think I believe it because based on what I've seen employing people over the past 13 years and being in school and I mean, you know, just encountering people and then studying people, I, I think it, I think I can believe it. And because business is all about goal setting and goal achievement, 
then I can understand why more people are not in business because if they're not able to figure out how to get to their goals, then business would be impossible. And so I think that there, there are reasons why this number is so high. And what I came up with was the three Ds, basically. Three Ds, distractions, damage, and deficits. That's how I'm referring to it. I'm going to use this evening to go over what I mean by these things. And a lot of it's based on my own personal experience, failures, and successes, and also people that I know, as well as backed by research about the brain and just studying psychology and neuropsych. Okay, so first, distractions. We are so easily distracted and it's so difficult. It's getting increasingly difficult because of social media and um, just all the cool things there are to do. You know, so you have some distractions that are about pleasure, you know, so, but I've broken it down into um, some general categories that can be distractions. That's people, places, things, and energy, really. But energy is going to fall into another category, but people's places and things can serve as distractions. Now, for people, when you're trying to set out to accomplish something, People can be your greatest asset or they can be a real hindrance, okay? And it just depends on how you deal with them and where they are in life. And so a lot of times, as much as I love people, I mean, we, we've all seen and met some extremely toxic people. I have gone through phases where I have been extremely toxic and I feel bad for like, I look back and I, I feel bad for the people who cared for me because I know I was a burden. And so you, and being toxic is not necessarily intentional. You know, some people just have a lot of stuff with them and for good reasons, whatever, whatever reasons people have stuff with them. You also have people that do intentionally try to sabotage, which is also falling under toxic but people can be very exhausting. Another way that people can be a distraction, I was guilty of doing this to one, one of my best friends not long ago. I was so excited for her on her journey for things that she's working on that I got excited and I just kept texting her with like more ideas and everything. And she was like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I don't wanna get overwhelmed because then I will feel discouraged and give up. And I was like, okay, good point, good point. So even if, you, if you're surrounded by a lot of people, people have a lot of opinions, people have a lot of ideas, and it can become confusing when you are dealing with a lot of people while you're trying to set a goal. And so, you know, the people could be a partner, family, friends, even children can be a distraction um, over involvement with children. There is a such thing as over involvement. Um, children that were unplanned. And when I say distraction, I don't, I'm not really trying to say burden, but what I'm saying is anything that would derail you or get you off track from your goal. And so naturally, you know, we talked about being a boss and a parent. So of course, it can be a distraction, especially if you have a lot of children. So that's one thing. And then Colleagues and associates who you come into frequent contact with, they certainly can be a distraction. Simply just being in the office dynamic and hearing the way people carry on, or if you're like in a school setting and there's something going on and there's like this vibe or this energy, it can be, even though you might not be choosing to be around these people, it's, well, it's a choice because you chose that job, but because you chose the job, these are the people that you have to be around and you can't you know, change that. And so the energy of those people can be a distraction, especially colleagues, because a lot of times when you're, if you're like working a job and you start getting a notion to go into business for yourself and you start sharing that with other people, if they don't understand the mindset, they can have the best of intentions, but they can derail you 
they can make they can scare you they can make you feel um insecure about well maybe maybe i'm tripping maybe i shouldn't be you know moving in this direction because when you're on that line and you're trying to cross over it can be very scary and you do second guess yourself at times in order to jump in you have to have a certain level of confidence and to make it work you have to have a level of confidence so you really cannot afford other people's doubt and you know things like that so be careful about colleagues because if they're a colleague chances are that means they're an employee and that means they're an employee they may have an employee frame of mind and you may be trying to shift from an employee you they might be trying to boss up and move from employee to being a boss and so be careful with that that's the people category one other thing i want to address is partners it's so important because typically your partner typically if all things go, are going well your partner is the person you probably spend the most time with or who is like close to your best friend if not your best friend and so a lot of times we have to be careful about this um ride or die attitude that people have thinking that that's what you have to do to be a good partner um if you have a partner that is not on track then you can't ride with them you damn sure shouldn't die for them so i would love it if we could start to consider eliminating the ride or die concept as if it's something to be promoted because i'm not riding with anybody anywhere if they taking me off a cliff and i'm definitely not dying for anybody so um distractions basically when you feel this commitment to a person that you are willing to sacrifice your own dreams your own goals or you're going to hang in here with this person who's bringing you down because you're ride or die because you feel like that's what you need to do that can be a big deterrent okay so the next category of distractions are places okay and that is where are you spending your time and where are you in physical proximity to things you know um what places do you frequent are you a person who hangs out at the library are you on campus are you in a club often are you where are you um are you with your children at like out and running around where are you physically because that can be a distraction if you're really trying to focus on something you have to be careful where you are you know if you're you're in business mode you're in you're trying to boss up chances are unless you're like kind of just meeting friends because you haven't seen them in a while chances are you're not really going to be at the bar you're not going to be doing happy hour too much i mean you're kind of going to honestly be a little alienated um you're going to be isolated when you're going hard to build a business in those stages and so consider like where you are because those things can exhaust you too um and you can also really absorb a lot of um energy when you're in places that are not conducive to getting in a zone all right so the next thing is well oh another thing about places i have a note to myself don't be disillusioned depending on what community you grew up in it's a mindset sometimes that it's so insidious and it's so subtle that you're you don't even really realize that it's even a thing but the community that you grow up in is very influential to how you think and how you operate so some people don't have a choice as to where they grew up obviously but at some point you know you may be trying to either get out of the area that you're in for whatever reason but you don't be disillusioned make sure you get out in the world make sure that you actually go places that you don't typically go see the world see the world if you can't see the world across the continent at least go to another county at least go to another city go to an area where everyone doesn't look like you and just observe take in the experience 
Because if you don't do that, that can be a distraction. Because if you're surrounded by people who are all kind of doing the same thing and live in the same way, you might have this false sense of security or contentment when really there's a lot more out there that you would want if you knew it was out there. So you're disillusioned. You have like a unclear picture of what, what the situation really is. The other distraction things, and the things really, most of the ones I've jotted down are compulsions, which are like addictions or compulsive behavior of some sort. So a biggie, a big distraction, um, and I'm not going to say especially for the fellows because it might be more for women, and I'll tell you why, but sex, sex can be a distraction um, because anything that brings pleasure makes you want to do it again and again, and it can become a compulsion, especially if it's filling some type of void. And so if you're, um, I know that like in the case of men, sex can be a distraction because how they're built, it's natural for them to have a desire. I mean, just the testosterone that they have and just being a mammal, a male mammal, they're, you know, I'm sure it's hard for them. I'm sure it's hard for them. And so when you go out there and you, um, you're you sleeping with people and you're having sex, I mean, it can really be a distraction. It can really have you... Um, messing up your situation or not thinking clearly or just getting off track. And I know, I know men know that they do this. I mean, I know they sometimes probably wonder why they do certain things they do and just like, oh, you know, but the babies that come from it, that, that like child support and things like that, although the concept of child support is, is a good concept, sometimes the way that it plays out legally is crazy. Um, and it is not always in the man's favor or the woman's favor. And so sex, you have to be careful like who you're sleeping with. Women, I feel like sex might be the a bigger distractor than for men because when women have sex, their, their oxytocin is released. I mean, men have some of that too, but women have more of this chemical. And this is a chemical that when you're like, after you have a baby, this is a chemical that is required to be produced in order for your milk, your breast milk to come out. And so it's a feeling of you have to be, it's like a helps you feel bonded and warm and fuzzy and like you want to nurture and be close, right? Because that's what's associated with it. And so that is released also when you're having sex. And that can make a woman really have a false sense of love in this because love can also they've discovered that when people feel like they are experiencing love it's different parts of the brain that light up that are indicative of the pleasure center being activated so women in the sex thing it can be a distraction because it can keep you out there in the streets in pursuit of it or even you know connect it to like one person that may not be good for you so let's watch out for the sex thing um, drugs, and this includes alcohol because alcohol is a drug. Um, I think I don't even have to go into a lot of detail about why drugs and alcohol are a distraction, but for just in case people need the clarity, it, they're mind altering substances, and they, while they may have some benefits in certain areas is changing cognitive processes in the brain. It's disrupting certain processes. It's messing up the circuitry and the electricity in the brain. It's like the firing of the neurons, that action potential, it's, it's, it, can, it goes slower. It goes slower oftentimes, or it may not go at all. And so, as much as people want to believe that they're at their best when they're high or drunk, you know, you're not, I'm here to tell you, um, you're not at your best. Um, depending on how you're built psychologically and whatever your reasons are for compulsively drinking and using drugs, you might actually perform better when you've taken that pain away. Because now if you take the Band-Aid away, you're going to have this pain you're dealing with, which can be equally debilitating. 
if not more debilitating. So some people have this idea that they do better when they're using drugs and alcohol because they know how they would feel without it. And some people can't live with themselves or cope without it. But it's a huge distraction because to be able to do well in business, you need executive functioning skills. And that's something that is uh, frontal lobe related. And executive functioning is the ability to plan, strategize, and execute things to get to a goal. And that's what we're talking about. Why do 92% of people not reach their goals? Something is happening here. And um, it's important to consider the role that drugs has in it. And I'm going to specifically say marijuana because I don't really feel that it's morally wrong. Um, but people now are, they're just, a lot of you guys are just going to have to let go of the idea that it's not holding you back. It is very likely that might be the main thing holding you back. But because you've created a habit and you don't want to give it up, you're going to have an argument for why you shouldn't have to give it up. That's fine. But if you are struggling to achieve your goals, I encourage you to detox for a while, work out whatever issues you may have, and then see how you're doing in life. See, you know, see if anything is improving. Simply stopping can change just the way you feel. With marijuana, it takes a while because if you're a heavy smoker, you're going to, it's going to be in your system at least 30 days after you quit because it lodges itself in fatty tissue and the brain, you know, it's, it's in there. It's, it takes a long time for every last remnant to come out. And the other thing is the marijuana these days, it's like the loud, the louder it gets, the more quiet your brain gets. So be careful with these strains out here. I mean, they got, I mean, it, it, the names are just crazy. I mean, I have seen menus of just names and the C and the CBD content is just like so high. And the people are, are doing it and I guess they don't really have concerns or they're not paying attention to their surroundings or their life or the quality of their relationships because they're walking around in a haze. But you can't tell them that they're walking around in a haze. They won't, most people won't own that. But I'm here to tell you, consider, consider detoxing and see if you get any clarity about um, the path you wanna take to achieve your goals. The other compulsions under the things category Games, okay? People play too many games on so many levels. And that can be sports, video games, gaming apps, chess, gambling. I mean, we're not talking about a hobby. And the other thing is when you're in business builder mode, you don't really have hobbies. Sorry, I know self-care is important, but that's kind of like a thing. It isn't a thing, really, when you're building businesses. It sounds good, but when you're actually doing what it takes to go hard, a lot of times, you know, you're, you're not taking good care of yourself. And so no hobbies and especially overdoing it. If you take a moment to do something that you enjoy, okay, but if you're spending hours and hours each day playing games, when is there going to be time for reading books and researching and getting out, doing the footwork, or the legwork that you have to do to build a business? When do you have time for that? You know, um, I took my kids to a chess club um, on Saturday, what was that, yesterday, for the first time, and the gentleman that teaches the club, that teaches them how to play chess, he asked me if I wanted to learn. And I've been asked this before. And I said, no, you know, not really. I'm not trying to be a poor sport, but I'm not really interested. And he was like, are you sure? And I said, well, to tell you the truth, I kind of play chess in real life every day. So I'm going to go over here while you're working with them and work on some things. <laughs> so it's like, Playing chess like in real life, you're, you're strategizing, you're executing, and you're trying to win. 
if you're if you're playing games all day long, you're these phone games, they're so addicting. I mean, it's like be careful with that. They are designed to be addictive and they're effective. And a lot of people are caught up in that. So be careful with the with the games. The other type of game that people play are mind games. And that's definitely a distraction. Um, you can get so caught up in playing games with somebody or with people um, for whatever reason. It, you, you're, it takes mental energy to figure out how you're going to, you know, come up with some kind of situation that's going to get this person to do this and do this. It's very manipulative. And you need that skill in business, but people are playing games in a way it's not being that manipulation is malicious. It is not uh, strategic in a positive way. So playing games on that level is not good either. Social media, you already know, can be a distraction and a preoccupation with material things. So materialism, a lot of times you might have somebody that's on their way. They may have gotten started with their business and then they get to a point where they get a little bit of money it, that money starts to feel good to them and they want to immediately go and start spending it. I did this. I did this after just a couple of years of being in business. I bought a Maserati. If I could go back in time, I wouldn't do that again. I would not do that again um, because I didn't really need a car of that caliber. And although it was, it, it boosted my morale and it gave me motivation and made me feel good to ride around in it. It was not the time for that. I had not arrived. That was not the time for that. And so when you're out here and you start spending your money, you run the risk of jeopardizing your business because you may hit hard times or you could be using that money. Like I, if I think about the car note that I paid on that car and I think about what if I had been paying that into the stock market or, you know, uh, interest bearing um, interest accruing account you know you just think about things like that because i could have just got more of a, a basic car like an a to b and saved a whole lot of money and maintenance maintenance so material things be careful with that because the preoccupation with that will get you off track so those are the distractions okay the other d is damage and the damage i'm talking about is um, psychological damage and or physical damage. You can't be in a business mindset if you're, if psychologically you're off kilter. You might be making do or managing, but you're definitely not manifesting your full potential if you, if you are, if you have mental blocks because of something in your psychology like childhood abuse or neglect or just you know, mental illness that may be genetic. Um, or like if you have a traumatic brain injury, like from a car accident or something, it could actually be like something physically that happened to you or dementia that is getting in the way of you being able to be in the mindset to do business. Um, the psychological stuff, although we talk about generational curses, I feel like those things still can be um, worked on. It's just harder to change once something happens in your childhood, it really shapes your brain and kind of like how things will play out for you for the rest of your life if you're not making conscious efforts to change those things. It is possible to change it, and that's called neuroplasticity. You can change your brain by doing things differently in your environment, but it's harder. Um, the, the brain is not as plastic as you get older. So if you're, if you're suffering from some type of psychological problem, you have to put in the work to get that stable before you can really go into business because it's just gonna to be too difficult, even like, especially with the way that you relate to other people. And because you need other people to do business for the most part, you're gonna to have to be at some point interacting with people. And if you don't, if you're not psychologically stable, if you have anger issues or you're uh, emotionally up and down mood swings, or you're constantly depressed, 
you know, those are the kind of things that really don't work with people. So um, that's damage, damage, the other D. The other D is what I'm calling deficits. And basically deficits is like the lack of something. And the lack mentality, I'm sure many of you have heard the phrase lack mentality. And that lack, that deficit can be in so many areas. It has implications for your finances, your knowledge, your support system, um, how powerful you are, how energetic you are. Deficits, not having adequate quantities of these things, you're, you're not going to be in a position to do business. The lack mentality can result from a number of things, but oftentimes it's because of how you were raised, your environment, the things that you've seen in your community, what you've been surrounded by. And it just basically, you just, you're always in a position where you're lacking. Your needs are not met in some way, shape or form. And you just can't seem to figure out how to get your needs met. So those are the three Ds, distractions, damage and deficits. These are the things that I think play the biggest role in why 92% of people do not achieve their goals. If only 8% of people are achieving their goals, then that will kind of explain the wealthy elite because it's such a minority of people who have actually reached a level of success financially. If, if you know, I heard today that the average net worth of the black woman in America, the black woman's net worth was $5 on average, $5. You got a song by Drake where the kids, you hear them, you know, they talking, they're reciting the lyrics to the song and they're like, what's your net, net, net worth? And I asked my children, do you even know what net worth is? but they're chanting it and maybe don't even know what it is. And $5, I mean, it's, it's really, I think in Boston for African-Americans, the average net worth is $8, I wanna say. So there's a lot of work that people have to do um, to figure out how to get more of that 92% into the 8%. So how do you get in the right mindset for success? We won't be able to cover that tonight in one video. Really, these videos, the series of videos I'm doing is all about that because it's a process that you have to actually go through and develop, especially if you were not born a boss with boss qualities. You have to develop them and use them like a muscle for them to get stronger. And so, but if I had to give a simple answer for purposes of tonight's video, um, I'd say just uh, to get started on that journey, first recognize where you are in your thinking. These are my opinions. These are not necessarily facts. This is my conceptualization of what I've seen in my experience. And this is how I feel is the best way to summarize what I think is getting in the way of people not being successful. And so if you can consider where you are, figure out where you are in your thinking. You know, we all tend to lack self-awareness, all of us. None of us are perfect. And it's easier to see the deficits in other people versus ourselves. So that's part of why we need each other. We're interdependent to be able to grow and be successful because if all you were relying on was yourself, you'd be in trouble because self-awareness is, is something that most people don't have, and those that do have it may not have enough of it, all right? So 
since none of us are perfect, I know I'm not, um, we have to accept the fact that imperfect people can impart wisdom. So now I want to just address, for those of you that are watching this, and if you're thinking, if there's anything that you're thinking right now as to how to discredit what I'm saying, how to discredit possibly me. Um, there may be people that know me personally and have a hard time receiving a message like this because they know all my stuff. And because people really don't want to change, even if you're delivering an accurate message, if they can find the holes in your situation, now they've given themselves permission to not make any changes because you're not in a good enough position to tell me what to do. I know what, you know, I know your situation, so you can't tell me anything. That's part of why I haven't done this sooner is because I'm thinking that nobody wants to hear what I have to say. I've been through so much, you know, I continue to uh, deal with struggles and challenges, but I got to a point where I said, you know what, there are going to be some people that can receive this message. And those are my people. Those that can't receive it, try to consider why. See where you are in your thinking. So don't take it from me, okay? Don't take it from me. If you are where you want to be in life, if you wouldn't, I don't think you would be on this channel or you might just be tuning in just to check me out, but chances are you want to do something different do something better. You may not be in a pitiful state, but you, you may want to do some things differently. And so if you are not where you want to be in life, challenge your current belief system and make sure it is, in fact, your belief system, okay? And so the you, got, you have to make sure that, remember, the disillusionment, um, Make sure that your belief system really is your belief system. It's not somebody else that has programmed something into you. You know, if you're constantly kind of like, you always kind of have this thing in the back of your mind and just won't go away, just keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming. Listen to that inner voice and, and try to figure out what, what, what is this thing that just won't let me rest. It may be urging you to do something and make certain changes. All right, and determine the areas. You determine your areas for improvement, not me. I'm not here to judge you all. And because I'm not interacting directly, I can't tell you my opinions about what you personally could be doing better. But I'm gonna give you just the general things to consider so that you can take those things and figure out um, on your own where you need to improve. Okay, most of the time, you know what your issues are. You might you just might not have the tools or the healthy tools to face those issues. And so I encourage everybody to create a safety net for yourself so that if you do get rid of some of these unhealthy tools that you're using, you will have like something to catch you if you fall. Because when you're working toward self-improvement, it's painful because you start to understand things about yourself, your friends, your family, your your community your race, your sex. I mean, you just start you just start thinking and a lot of times you don't like what you see. And you might like a lot of things, but some of the things that you discover it it can be painful. And you don't want to like go down and it take on too much of that. You definitely need to make sure like I know African Americans um don't generally believe in going to therapy, but maybe like get in therapy and then start to work on yourself so that maybe you have developed a rapport with a trained professional who can help you to work through the changes you're trying to make. Okay. You need a safety net because it can be painful when you're changing. All right. So I'm going to start taking um, Q and a now. Let me see if I've missed people. Let's see. Okay, I don't think I've missed questions, just people joining. Truth is truth. Yep. Okay, the things you have been through are exactly why you have to keep going. 
I've been through um, a lot. There are more, there are people who have been through way more than me, but for me, I only know my experience and I feel like I've been through a lot. And for those of you that may have seen my post um, last night, late last night, it was a, a um, thumbnail image of me from four years ago when I did a YouTube video about suffering from depression. And a, a friend of mine forwarded me that. And when I watched it and I saw, I, I saw it, the thumbnail before I even clicked on it. And I was like, what is this? I was like, oh, that's me. That was me. I, I didn't even recognize myself four years ago. Didn't recognize myself. I had a similar feeling when I um, was looking at old emails from about that time period for, I was like doing something where I needed to go back in my emails and I started reading some things and I was like, Ooh, like it was the thought process, everything. It just didn't, it was somebody that I felt like now I can't even relate to. And that was myself. So, um, basically going through things and evolving and I still have a ways to go. But when I looked at the two pictures, the one from four years ago, I looked 10 years older than what I look today. I mean, I, I was like dead inside. I looked terrible. I had lost like 90 pounds. I had like bags under my eyes. And if you actually listen to the video, even just the cadence and the, and the tone of my voice, it was like I was a zombie. And um, that was a, it was for me to see that it made me think, okay, she was encouraging me by sending me that she was encouraging me that you've come a long way. You deserve to use a platform like this to help people. You are credible. You are, you do, you are reputable. You can get on here and, and help people um, despite things that you've been through or maybe going through. It's all called balance. Yep. And so any comments or discussion for getting your mind right first before you can get to the bag? I see there, um, there are definitely several people watching. So I love to hear your thoughts on what I've discussed tonight. Let's see, I see comments there. Let me click on that. Who helped you to shift? What helped you to shift? So, you know, that's the thing that's that's the thing that's funny. I don't recall the moment. I only recall the time period. And I could think about a few things that were happening around that time that made me think, I need to fight for my life. I need to fight for my life right now because if this is what life is all about forget it. Like, never mind. That is like, I remember feeling that way every day. And that person I saw in that thumbnail four years ago, that is how she was thinking. But got to a point where it was like, I need to fight for my life. And I actually remember actively thinking about things I could do to shift my level of consciousness, my level of happiness, my level of stability and health, I was like, what can I do to better utilize my time and to put myself on a path to change my life instead of being stuck in the same situation, making excuses why you can't change your situation. I was like, I, I want to come up with something. And I and that's when I ended up going to school. I went back to school. I applied um, to, to, for my, to go get my doctorate, basically. And I felt like that really helped because it required me to get out the house and go do things and not alienate myself. And it, it really um, proved helpful. Let's see, do I practice daily meditation? Just recently, actually, um, I downloaded an app called Simple Habit and it reminds me to meditate. In the, it's like I said it for a certain time in the early part of the day and I said it for the evening, and I admit, I don't always do it. If I'm in the middle of something, then I'll, you know, kind of just like make the notification go away. 
but it at least reminds me even if I don't actually like take the time to set up a really good area conducive to meditating, I will at least try to practice mindfulness. And mindfulness is just like wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you're able to like stop for a moment and just experience things in their fullness. Okay. So like if you're, if you're drinking a cold glass of water and holding a glass, I'm able to feel the cold hardness of the glass. I'm able to feel the, the um, condensation on the glass. I see the water moving. And it's just the way that you focus on something so much that when you have that level of focus, it kind of puts other things out of your mind. And you have to learn to be able to focus in the present. I learned this skill in my program. So meditation, I definitely recommend that. Sorry, I jumped in, so I will have to replay. No, 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 Kim. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm good. You can, you can definitely go back and look, but you can also ask questions. I don't mind. People know they can come and go as they please. I don't want people to think that I expect them to tune in to me every night for like an hour, ninety minutes. Let's see. Are there? Hold on. Let me make sure I didn't miss a question. I saw something. Are there any healthcare or mental health resources that you might recommend? There is an app called Better Help. Better Help, you can download it on your phone or device, and it is a way to do um, therapy. They, it's like out of pocket. You don't do insurance, but you can apply for financial aid. You might end up spending like maybe $35 a week, what you would spend on Starbucks coffee, you could end up having a psychologist or a master's level therapist actually um, do therapy right from your phone. You can do video sessions, you can do chat room, and you can do on the phone. And when you pay that weekly fee, you get to contact your therapist whenever you want. They don't, they don't have to respond right away but you can you can have like three sessions a week if that therapist is in agreement that that's what you need if at that stage until you're more stable or until you're moving in the direction you need and so you don't pay for each session you just pay your weekly fee and you get that level of support and you don't have to worry about leaving the house or logistics you know it's very convenient so that's better help and then and of course, let's see, YouTube has a, um, just it's a wealth of information. So you can motivational videos. There are just life coaches by the dozen. Um, I do know that, and actually I'm going to save this for acknowledgments. There are some people that I can recommend that can help you to get on a path to wellness, health and wellness because that's not really going to be my focus here. More of my talks are going to be about the business of it. But I felt the need to do a topic like this tonight because people should understand that b before you're ready to start a business and be successful, you don't want to jump in ill-prepared because then you'll be discouraged and you will think business isn't for you. When in fact, it may be that you're just, your timing is off and you're not where you need to be at that time to do it. Let's see, hold on here. I see more comments, just a second. Yep, mindfulness, focus. Our minds are all over the place. Oh yeah, it's, it can be really stressful. Um, when you're in business, that mindfulness thing, when the professor taught us this, he used the orange and we had to like peel an orange in class and we had to use all of our senses, basically tactile, nose, you know, sense of smell, sight. And it was just, it was really interesting. Mindfulness is good because you have to be able to quiet your mind and focus. And when there's a million things to do and distractions, which is what we're talking about today, 
the um, mostly distractions about why people, you know, can't accomplish their goals, that mindfulness, being mindful of things is very important. What are your thoughts on network marketing businesses? All right, well, you know, I'm, I'm just going to give you my opinion, and it is not with the intention to look down on anybody that does it or, you know, make people feel like they're not truly entrepreneurs when they do it, but I can't stand MLMs. I can't stand multi-level marketing when it comes to my friends, my family, and, and people I know that are putting in so much effort to get the people at the top rich. It sounds like a job to me. What I do like about MLMs is if I started one, I think that it's genius. What I don't like is when people, I just had somebody in my inbox last night and I don't mind. I love, I love her. She's such a kind spirit. Um, she was in my inbox and she asked me, she said that she, that there was a deadline coming for her to meet some type of quota for her to get like to the next level. And she was asking if I would buy, you know, a certain amount of stuff to get her to the next level. And to be honest, I had to ask her, what are you selling? You know what I mean? And she told me like what she was selling. And I was like, okay, I have to be honest. I'm getting to a point where I'm going to refuse. I think I'm going to refuse to participate and buy things from people because anytime you have to go around searching like that to sell somebody else's brand and you have to like reach out, I mean, if Sales is one thing, I understand that, but if you, I just feel like the multi-level marketing and network marketing businesses, I feel like the design has a psychology behind it. And it basically, in my opinion, tricks people into thinking that they're entrepreneurs when they're actually workers and they're working harder for that business than they're working for their, they could be putting that same effort into developing their own business, but most people feel comfort in knowing that something has been established because most people don't want to do the work to boss up. People don't want to boss up. So I think they're predatory and I think um, they're aggravating because you have all these people coming to you, try to sell you things that you don't need, you don't want, but you want to be supportive you know, that kind of thing. Now, I do think, I do think that you can actually learn a lot from people and you can network and meet people that you, like your involvement in those type of things, if it's short lived, if it's positioning you to understand what you need to know for whatever it is you're doing. So just, just think about that though. Just think about anybody that actually has been doing any MLM. I applaud your effort. And again, I'm not looking down on you, but part of me being here is to tell you some things that you may not have wanted to hear. And remember I said, challenge your belief system and make sure it is in fact your belief system because the MLMs, they kind of damn near brainwash people into thinking they're loving every minute of it, getting somebody at the top rich. Yet they're still not getting to that next level. They keep making you think there are these levels and there are these levels and they'll put these people in front of you and they use the materialism because they know that people have a preoccupation with material things. And remember, that falls under the, one of the distractions that keeps you from being in business. MLMs are distractions. It prevents you from devoting time to your own business. The person who actually inboxed me last night, I respectfully 
explain my position briefly. I said, I actually have made a rule for myself that I will not support MLMs unless I know the owner of the MLM. I then told the lady to be careful and to make sure she's not being exploited. And I let her know also that my, my, um, I already know someone that's close to me that's, that's doing the same type of um, business, only they own theirs. Theirs is in the MLM. So I told her, I can, maybe what I can do is I can introduce you to my folks and maybe y'all can figure out how to partner up and, you know, kind of you be at the top of it and you reap the bulk of the benefits from your labor and your efforts. And she basically said, well, I'm, I really like this company. I'm happy there and no thanks. And that is her prerogative. Um, but I, but I think it's indicative of what is happening out here. You know, you have people that are really committed and devoted to owners and people they will never meet or they've never actually shook their hand. They would pass up an opportunity to do business with somebody ground level that looks like them. I think it's part of the problem. And I, like I said, I don't want that person to take it personal that I use that as an example. Now, part of why I feel the way I feel is because I have no evidence to the contrary. But the people that they put in front of people with, because the, they know there's a preoccupation with materialism, if you find yourself in, in a company that tends to send you places or send you to events that put you in touch with somebody who has flashy things or nice things like a nice home, a nice car, um, and just really be well put together. They'll put those things strategically in front of you to make you believe that that could be you one day. And nobody that I know personally has ever become that person. Well, when it comes to the money, I don't think I know anybody who's become that person that can rely solely on that as income and that it's been sufficient and it has been everything that they've been promised. If you don't keep a certain level, you're demoted. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you don't want to, you don't want to have to feel like you have to run around and beg people to buy things from you and they don't even know what you're selling. You, you're just like, I haven't heard from you um, and I don't know how long and you just ask, you're just telling me that because you need to meet and get to the next level. So when they train you to go to people and do that and say that, it's because the creators of the MLM know the psychology of people. So they know that when you go to your family and your friends and you tell them you're trying to level up, people, if they feel like if they don't help you, that they're holding you back or that they have prevented you from achieving something, it's, it's trickery. It's, I see through that mess. I just don't, I don't participate. Hey, Barbara Petty, thank you for tuning in. All right, let's get some questions. Oh, I have quite a few people watching right now. Come on, I know you guys have questions. Um, I guess opinions, discussion, anything you can offer the group. If you put something on here, I usually, so far, I've been reading everything. There are no trolls or anybody doing anything indignant. So if you have questions. Let's see. Any recommendations for new real estate agents? Well, I, I don't have a problem saying when I don't know something or something isn't my lane. Real estate, from an agent standpoint, is not something I'm very familiar with, but I do feel like there are very successful real estate agents that are entrepreneurs, are their own bosses. But be careful also with that. If you didn't, if you're not your own boss, if, if you're like with a company, then you're 
kind of, in my opinion, not really an entrepreneur. If you have to share your bread with anybody else other than your partners, you're not an entrepreneur. And as far as whether or not it's a good market right now for real estate agents, that part I'm not sure of. Sorry, I couldn't be of, of more help, Janine. How are you, Janine? It's been a long time. Thanks for tuning in, Chastity. You've been really uh, showing some support. So here's one thing I was going to say. Um, goal setting. With every success, however small, it builds your self-esteem, your self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is your belief in your ability to get something done. So what I would like everyone to do who views this video, before you go to sleep tonight, I want you to set a goal for yourself and accomplish that goal. However slight, make a note of it. Make sure it's something that is quantifiable so that you know that you got it done and make sure that you do it. And once you do it, you've accomplished the goal. And you may not really feel it, you may not really notice it, but it's doing something to your psyche when you succeed, when you tell yourself, I set out to do something and I did it. Mama, hey, my mom on there. <laughs> she gonna beat me. You don't play with Nancy Griffin. <laughs> my mother is um, one of my greatest inspirations with regard to work ethic. She is she she got it done she figured out how to get it done in my childhood and for that i'm forever grateful i saw her times she was always just looked so nice and beautiful and elegant but i'm sure the chaos in her mind and in her heart knowing what i know now as a grown woman i know that it had to be really hard to do the type of work she was doing and still tend to her children i know it had to be really hard um, my father is a great inspiration because he brings that, that risk taking and don't ever stop until you just keep going, just keep going. And I remember my first semester in college, I got all A's and a B, one B. And when I, here I am thinking I'm about to report back to dad and get my pat on the back. And he was like, why'd you get a B? And I was just like, you don't see all the other A's though, and even if it be that bad. And I think um, I dropped out for a semester because I was really stressed out over some things. I took a semester off. I went back. I never got another B for my bachelor's. So when you have parents that set examples for you, it's it's really it's it's really helpful. Both of my parents were go-getters and they came from the projects, the same project, and they actually got out together. They went from Louisville, Kentucky to Detroit, Michigan um, on their own. I think my mother might have been 16 or 17, my dad just a couple years older. and. They struggled and everything, I think even faced homelessness before. And they eventually had me and my sister. And then time went by and everything. And my mother made a power move that I don't know that I could do to, I don't know that I could do it to this day. But she knew that Detroit, Michigan was going down and it was not the place for opportunity and not the place for her family. So she, left, went to Maryland, came here to Maryland, and 
got a, you know, got established in a career and within a, I don't even remember the time frame, but I guess within maybe a couple of months, several weeks, a couple of months, then she ended up uh, sending for us and my dad and us all reunited in Maryland. And that's how we got to Maryland, which is one of the most progressive states for African Americans. And um, that was just the courage to be able to leave your children. Because even back then, imagine like even now you have mom guilt issues and people still look at things a certain way. But back then it took incredible courage to make that move. And while at first sight, it may have looked like people could have been questioning, how could you just leave your children like that and not see them for a few months? She saved our lives. Okay. 1986, she came to Maryland and made it happen. So that goes back to people in your life that can either be motivators or distractions. But even still, you can have a person in your life that can sometimes hinder and distract you, but at other times, they be like your biggest cheerleader. And I think that with family, that's pretty common. You kind of, you have your ups and downs with family, but overall, you know they support you. Any other questions, comments? So set, set a goal, set a goal. And if you need to tell somebody what your goal is so that you have an accountability partner, believe it or not, you all are my accountability partners. By me using this platform to get up on a soapbox and tell people what suggest to people what they should do or, you know, it holds, I have to hold myself to a higher standard. I have to be more cautious about how I'm behaving in my own life so that I won't be a fraud. So now as this thing, as people start to get a, a look into my world, literally I'm here like in my bedroom, you guys are in my bedroom with me, it's very intimate accountability partners because I know that if I continue doing this, I don't want I don't want the trolls to be able to come in here and and um, say things and do certain things to try to discredit me. So I'm going to be if, if you thought I was going hard before. Oh, you ain't see nothing. I will wait. You all can remember, once I open up Q&A, it doesn't matter what the topic is, as long as it's within the realm of business, you can ask any question. No problem. No problem. I want to share the information. And I know it may not be what people want to hear. And it may, you know, you may get a little feeling inside when you hear somebody say something. But usually, if something upsets you a bit, think more about it and really examine why, why it's having that effect. Most people are surrounded by yes men. And that's part of the distractions of people that they bring. They can cause confusion because um, a lot of people don't like to speak their truth with the people that are in their lives because they want to be liked. I have grown pretty, I won't say comfortable with, but I am prepared for the role of bad cop because I have been playing it for years in business, family, you know, I'm, I'm that person who will tell you quickly what you don't want to hear. Let's support one another more. So 
So if there are no more comments, we've been going for about an hour and 10 minutes. I'm happy to stay and answer questions, but if there are no more, I know it's Sunday night and people need to prepare. Some people need to prepare for work. Imagine for those of you all that are starting to, you know, your your routine or whatever you do when it's Sunday night because you know you're about to go back to the rat race. Imagine a life where Sunday doesn't even feel like Sunday anymore because there is no Monday morning rush. There is no back to work. You can actually go out on a date or hang out after you've gotten established in business. Every every night is like Friday night. Of course, if you have children, <laughs> they have to get to school and that kind of thing. You have to be a little more cautious, but you can travel. Um, if you if you make that a priority, you can travel. That's not something that I do a lot of because I feel like I'm not quite where I need to be to do a lot of um, traveling. Um, I still have, I don't know, every time I like think about booking something, I just have second thoughts about it for a number of reasons. And so, you know, but when, but when you're in a position to come and go as you please, those are the times that make you think that your hard work and sacrifices are worth it. So I can stay up tonight because I'll just be here. I'm not preparing for work tomorrow. You need to boss up, be your own boss, set your own hours, be able to pick your kids up from school or the bus stop. Skip childcare altogether. Childcare is getting crazy. I mean, things are just crazy things happening in childcare. Even when people have cameras. I don't know if you all saw the the woman that sw like swung the girl across the room, and the girl split her head open and had to get stitches. And the little girl was just minding her business. She wasn't even misbehaving, and the teacher just went to her and just no. My children have never been in a stranger's daycare. The closest they've come to that is being like in martial arts or something like that. But childcare, I started my own. And before that, there was my dad's. And before that, I just relied on the father and a few people to handle that when I was in school and working. Derek, you're trying, what are you trying? What you trying to do? I like, I like Derek. Number one, I need to get your information because when you went on YouTube, I saw your name indicated that maybe you own a landscaping company. And if I'm not mistaken, I think you're the one that asked me the question about who does landscaping. And I was saying, uh, it's kind of like not getting done. And then the people that do it for my house, I don't even know who they are. I couldn't even tell you. So Derek, inbox me your information for your landscaping company. And I do appreciate you because I've seen you consistently tune in. Whereas most of the other people who have been tuning in have been women. And I wonder what's up with that because, um, it might just be that some men are just not interested in making that money. Maybe they're already making it. Or maybe they can't receive these things from a woman. Because there's no reason there shouldn't be more men in this group. The information is the same. It works practically the same way for both sexes, the information that I'm giving. I'm not trying to like just appeal to women or black people or, you know, it's really, but it just seems to be going in a certain direction and it makes me wonder why. And there are a lot of people complaining about men needing to step up. Where are you guys? Perhaps it's just me. You feel like I'm not, I'm not the one to get that information from. 
but I challenge you to think about why you're not tuning in. That is one of the main things is to have your parents to support you or very, very close friends. Yeah, support system is very important, especially if you choose certain type of businesses. That's not to say that someone who has no one can't make something happen, but I would say that the field you go into or whatever it is you're pursuing, it would have to be one of those things where it doesn't require like a whole lot of people, a whole lot of moving parts. With the businesses I'm in, there are a lot of moving parts a lot of moving parts. So you need you need people. You like hearing business talk? Well, tell your friends. I mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but can you share with me? Is there something I'm missing? Is there like, like a guy code that I'm missing? Do you deal with other men and know their frame of mind? Or like, are they doing well? Are they, what's happening? Why, why would you think that more men are not tuning in to my talks. And I'm sorry if that puts you on the spot. I know I don't want you to feel like you have to answer and then guys come back and read it and they're like, hey man, you know, who do you think you are? But why, why, where are the men? We were getting ready for my daughter's um, birthday party a few weeks back. She woke up over my sister's house and my mother and stepdad happened to be there, you know, to prepare, help prepare for the party, baking cakes and stuff like that. And when my, apparently when my daughter woke up, the first thing she, um, said, I guess, because she was excited. She knew it was her day. She was like, what are the men going to be doing? What are the men going to do? <laughs> and I was just like, okay. You know, I know I know where some of that comes from, but it's also, she, she's just like, a, she's, she's a boss baby. She's one of those people that was born a boss. She's like, what are the men going to do? Almost like I know I know they're not going to sit around because I see everybody else busy, but I think she hears me talk that way, like in reference, because she has a, a brother that's a little older than her. And I'm trying to not really teach stereotypes, but I'm trying to make sure he knows your little sister shouldn't be working harder than you. You shouldn't be letting her do these things for you. You need to do these things for yourself. And if anything, do these things for her and for me. Do you think that, hold on, let's see. I missed a question. Do you think that it's easy to open shelters for the homeless? I'm gonna tell you something that has broke my heart. All the industries that are the ones that are most important, education, childcare, assisted living, you know, like places that take care of people, homeless shelters, they are so highly regulated that it is a turnoff for people because there are so few resources that you're given to work with, yet you're expected to follow a million rules, more than half of which don't make sense or serve the purpose that people think they're going to serve. The people who come up with the regulations, they're, they're not, they typically have not been an owner of that type of business before, and they're making rules that they don't make any sense. So a homeless shelter, also your zoning and your youth and, occup, op, your youth and occupancy permit process is going to be more stringent because you're having groups of people congregating and sleeping overnight in an establishment. That is one of the most stringent use groups you can have. And so to even get started and to get open and to get approved, I can only imagine. I haven't tried myself, but
but I just know, I, I know. However, it needs to be done. People, people need, we need teachers, we need child care centers, we need assisted living places, we need homeless shelters. But I'll be honest, from a business model and a business standpoint, they're not the greatest businesses to be in. I mean, I think they're good transition businesses, like to get your start. But you have to really, you can't be a venture capitalist or somebody who wants to expand. It's not easy to expand those type of businesses. The quality goes down. The, the bigger you get and you can't put your hands on things, people may not have the same passion that you had when you started. That happened to me in all of my businesses. That is one of the main, let me make sure I didn't miss a question. I think I went back, let's see. Sorry, my computer is moving a little slow, I'm trying to scroll down. I see more questions. It's moving super slow. Come on now. Okay, let's see. Derek said, my friends aren't into business. Men might think it might be a waste of time. Plus they might be like, they want to do it on their own. Yeah. But doing it on your own, is that really even a thing? Because what does doing it on your own really mean? That means you don't consult anybody, you don't ask people questions, you don't have mentors, you don't have investors, you don't have, what does doing it on your own really even mean? And I know exactly what you mean, but I'm posing the question for viewers that may not really, you know, more men are not on this channel because they may want to feel like they figured it out on their own. I absolutely agree that that's probably one of the reasons. But again, that is one of the, the, that's one of the three D's as to why people don't accomplish their goals. That issue, I want to say falls under the psychological damage category because that way of thinking is more about ego and not about effectiveness and efficiency. What gets the job done? What is the easiest path to get the job done? Who is the most informed person that you have access to that can help you or give you ideas? Do you think it is more easy to open homeless shelters or daycare center? I would say daycare because homeless shelters Let me make sure that's my answer. <laughs> For me, because I, I classify myself as an empath, um, it would be harder to run a homeless shelter because it was already hard enough for me to encounter a lot of people that were struggling just day to day with like, they might not have been homeless, but they're they're struggling, so they need discounted child care, or you have elderly people that only have twelve hundred dollars a month and they need total care. So it like hurts my heart, but so to so I think running a homeless shelter would be very I think it would I think you would be subject to burnout quicker than with child care. At least with child care, you do have so many moments of joy when you have a good set of staff and they're doing things and you can see their little smiling faces and you do sometimes have your satisfied customers that appreciate you. With the homeless shelter, I imagine that that's just heavy, heavy. And you are relying on all donations. 
and grants. And that's a, a whole different thing, which you just gave me an idea. I need to do a video about um, grant writing because um, my sister and I and my mother, we were successful in teaming up to get awarded. I think it was about a, in total, I think it ended up being about a quarter million dollars. And the proposal itself, I think, maybe was about 100 pages. It's very tedious trying to convince people to give you money. And plus, there's so much exploitation. Yeah, pig-headed, stubborn. I'm telling you, women can be stubborn too, but men can be very, very stubborn. Yeah, men can be very, very stubborn. Um, I'm stubborn, so I'm not going to even judge. I know women can be stubborn too, but it seems like men can be stubborn to a fault, like cut your nose off to spite your face stubborn. Hey, Keith, I didn't even realize there's another man. <laughs> Any other questions? I see, I see people still hanging in there. People still have viewers, still have new people coming in. Welcome, Stephanie. Any questions? We're just at the open part, the Q&A part of this live stream. Any questions about business or education, finance? I'm limited with my finance information with regard to uh, stocks, but financial literacy, I feel like I am stronger in. Yeah, go, don't forget your goals, everyone. For anybody that's tuning in and you missed what I said earlier, um, I gave out homework pretty much, and that is to set a goal and accomplish that goal before you go to sleep. And somebody will end up watching this video. It could be any point of the day. So that's why I'm saying before you go to sleep. For those people who are like, I'm about to go to sleep now. I want you to set a goal and accomplish that goal before you go to sleep. Because part of getting in the mindset of winning is to stop putting things off till tomorrow. So figure out a goal that you can accomplish before you close your eyes tonight and accomplish that goal. <laughs> yeah, men be like, let me die, okay? I will figure out how to bring myself back to life. I got this. <laughs> yep. They just cut that nose off despite in, despite in their own face. What I will say is this, this, I'll make sure that these videos are not men bashing videos. I promise you. And if I do any bashing, women will get bashed too. Let's just say that. Women will get bashed too. This won't be a man haters group. In fact, I want to build the men up and I want them to build us up. But right now I feel like our men could use a little bit of help right now and, and, and encouragement but they have to get over themselves first. I wish there was a way I could see who's still in the group because I know so far my family has been supporting me each night and friends. Balance, exactly, balance. Hold your ground. Like I said, consider your belief system. Make sure it's your belief system. But don't just be stubborn. Like, don't just want something a certain way or just, you know, because just because. It's like just because somebody, just because it wasn't your idea, 
you know, you're not going to do it. Or just because um, you somebody suggests something or they've made it clear they would like things a certain way and you just oppose just because like that kind of behavior is not helpful at all in any setting. If you have a compelling case for why you want things your way, that's what I can appreciate. And sometimes you have to agree to disagree. But what I can appreciate is just plain stubbornness. So I'm going to hang out here a little longer, see if any more comments pop up or any more people come into the group. What I suspect if I think my audience will end up being people that don't know me, that I didn't go to school with, um, not high school anyway. I think that it will be predominantly female and it may, I'm not sure what the racial composition will be, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the direction it's headed. But one thing I need to start doing is asking people in the video to um, like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Business Builder Basics, and share. Sharing is caring. I'm sharing this information and I would like for you to share it with other people. Behind every strong man, there is a strong woman. I think there's, there is definitely truth in that. I think there's definitely truth in that. I do think you have some strong men that have some lousy women behind them. Maybe they might just be so strong that they don't let that woman interfere or distract them. And they probably eventually will get rid of that person. But I, but I definitely do think there's a degree of truth in behind every strong man, there's a strong woman. Some men are just strong and got it together all on their own, as it should be. The woman should be there to complement and, and not supplement, complement. They should be able to compliment a man not say not compliment like he looks nice, but compliment like be the perfect counterpart to the man so that he can be great and take care of his family. Okay, I'm going to do acknowledgments and then we're going to get ready to wrap up. I want to give a shout out to Lonetta Grant. She's the, she's a boss chick. She's the owner and founder of Dynasty Arts and Movement. They do dance and acrobatics. And she put out a live stream today that had me in tears. And I'm going to be honest, it, I mean, she she was powerful. The delivery made you feel like you were being put in check by your mama, who knows best, because it, she was just really, she was just keeping it real. She was just really keeping it real, and it's something that people need to hear. But she has um, a business. It's on 7979 Parson Drive in Forestville, Maryland. And it's one of those places where they, she's actually skilled in dance. She's a dancer herself, and she's skilled in creating true dancers. And the reason why I make the distinction is no knock on the other places, but some other places kind of just do some things. It might be a part of their aftercare program or um, just, you know, but, but she is where you go if your daughter or son tells you they want to grow up to be a professional dancer. That's where you go when, when, when it's like serious and you need to get them started early. 
she the acrobatics it's very interesting if you go um and find her website it's very interesting um the way they teach the special form of dance and acrobatics and you actually have to have i think a certification in that to be able to even advertise that you teach it because of safety factors but the way she was in that video i was like children need that in their life children around in my community anyway need that in their life as far as i'm going to try to get my daughter there i had inboxed her a while ago and i have my children um in karate and dance somewhere else but i told her after today's video i was like i'm gonna get my daughter over to you um in the summertime because even though my daughter doesn't want to be a professional dancer the passion that i sense in um lonnie is she's just i think she's 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 a good person to make a part of your village she referenced you know people wanting her to intervene when it's too late trying to bring her into the village after a child has grown up to create problems she's a good person i think to expose the youth to when they're young she has a spirit of excellence um another shout out is to s dawn premier this is a youtube channel with shawnita dawn who is promoting health and wellness and also creating a, a new thing called sass and sauce with a partner of hers which is sort of like a dance fitness sexy kind of way of getting in shape and feeling beautiful and I just really, she's traveling the world now. I, I joke with her and I tell her, you're like, you're an international superstar. And although it was a joke, I'm, it's like becoming truth, like seriously, she's been all over the world. And lastly for tonight, Good Hope Tutoring. If you need, not just for children, but if you're an adult, there are a lot of adults facing illiteracy issues of illiteracy and it's a hidden thing because there's a lot of shame behind it so she she can tutor adults um sat prep but her specialty is math but she has other tutors also um the site is located in akakik but she's creating online options and sometimes she's even able to send tutors to your home you can look her up good hope tutoring dot com i want to say and the number is 301-717-8046 this is aqua keek maryland I want to make sure each show i i acknowledge people that are bosses people that are bossing up basically they've bossed up or they're bossing up they're in the process they've accomplished it i want to acknowledge it okay Let's say you do not, you might have to always be their woman per se. Sometimes it's some mamas or daughters. Yep. Oh man. I, because I'm trying to keep this channel about business, I told myself I, I will let other people handle a lot of the other kind of um, opinion, you know, things. But I could go on and on and on about the impact a mother has in a man's life. There is the S. Dawn Premier link. And there is the link. Thank you. You like help you helping me out right here. You know, because you know I'm a rookie. She's like supporting me. So Arisha Watkins Brown, that's you can click on that for Good Hope Tutoring. Welcome, Kenneth. Any questions? Some people come in and then they like roll out when they see oh no i just wanted to see what was going on that's not my thing okay well i'll give kenneth about another minute to see if a comment pops up sometimes it's like a delayed response that's why i just wait a while but it's okay we we can we need to learn to get comfortable with silence anyway
Did y'all set that goal yet? <laughs> I'm serious. Set that goal and accomplish it before you close your eyes and go to sleep tonight. If you already sitting there thinking about excuses about why you can't do it tonight, you just do it tomorrow. Nope. You're not ready then. You're not ready to boss up. Okay. No more comments coming in. I gave them a chance. Okay, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. And um, I really appreciate the support. I want everybody to boss up.